Good afternoon. It's Wednesday, the 6th of November, 2024, just after one o'clock. Welcome to UK Column News. I'm your host, Mike Robinson. Joining me today, we have Vanessa Bailey and Charles Mallet. Welcome to the programme, both. Uh, we are going to get straight on, of course, with the United States uh, election. So uh, let's have a look and see. The, this is the result just before we came on air. 279 Electoral College votes to Donald Trump, 223 Kamala Harris. Everybody will know by now that Trump is uh, going to be the next president unless they assassinate him before the inauguration. Um, but the question is, will it make any difference? And the answer to that is probably not. Uh, well, in some respects, perhaps, in, but only in the matter by way of nuance. So uh, Trump gave his... Uh, his victory speech, he said, this is the greatest political movement of all time. Uh, no, uh, no ego in that at all. This is, uh, of course, talking about his Nuremberg rally, and it really was coming across as, as exactly that type of thing. Um, a couple of days ago, Nigel, well, Nigel Farage, we should say, of course, is over there uh, because uh, he enjoys uh, Trump's company and uh, being an MP, that's the best place to serve his constituents. But he was speaking to Tucker Carson uh, a couple of days ago. Let's uh, have a quick listen to this. Tell us, I mean, is it an overstatement to say that the rest of the world is watching this really, really carefully? Oh, you bet your life. I mean, this is this is big. Um, you think it's just about America. No, it's much bigger than that. It's about leadership of the Western world. It's about what signal gets sent to dictators all over the world who are launching wars, causing problems, whether we talk Middle East, whether we talk Ukraine, whether we talk potentially what might happen uh, with China, uh, Taiwan, etc. This is, I, I tell you something, this is a very, very important moment. Just, I mean, just think in the last four years, what has happened around the world? Well, is, is it a very important moment? But what we get there is a hint about foreign policy, uh, because, of course, uh, Farage and Trump have discussed this. Um, and, well, I just want to show you again a bit of video that we showed you in uh, June, I think it was, um, with J.D. Vance talking about foreign policy. And you, you may say, well, OK, he was only vice presidential candidate at the time, uh, and he, he's now going to be vice president. But what does he know? Well, in fact, of course, he's just reiterating uh, policy that, that Trump had expressed while he was in his previous presidency. So let's just have a listen to this. We are subsidizing the Europeans to do nothing. The Europeans are not carrying their fair share of the burden, especially when it comes in provision of weapons and their own and they're deindustrializing their own country at the same time that they say that Putin must be defeated at all costs. But I actually think that Washington, at least current Washington leadership, really likes the fact that the Europeans are completely dependent on us. That's not an al alliance. These people aren't increasingly allies. They are client states of the United States of America who do whatever we want them to do. Well, I think we have a real opportunity to ensure that Israel is an ally in the true sense, that it's going to pursue their interests. And sometimes those interests won't totally overlap with the United States, and that's totally reasonable, but they are fundamentally self-sufficient. And I think the way that we get there in Israel is actually by combining the Abraham Accords approach with the defeat of Hamas that gets us to a place where Israel and the Sunni nations can play a regional counterweight to Iran. Again, we don't want a broader regional war. We don't want to get involved in a broader regional war. The best way to do that is to ensure that Israel with the Sunni nations can actually police their own region of the world. And that allows us to spend less time and less resources on the Middle East and focus more on East Asia. In the same way that we want our own allies to do the job in Europe so that we can focus on East Asia, I think that the same is true of the Sunni nations in Israel and the Middle East. We want to focus more on East Asia. So you'll notice that he qualified. We don't want a broader regional war in the Middle East. No, he qualified that by then saying we don't want to get involved in a broader regional war in the Middle East. They absolutely want a broader regional war in the Middle East. So, so let's just consider Trump's foreign policy and what we're likely to see here. The first question is, this has been a bit of a talking point, uh, is the US going to leave NATO? Now, of course, uh, if we go back to 2018, Trump was busy uh, telling the Europeans that they weren't stumping up enough cash at that time, that NATO wasn't fit for purpose and so on. And this threat is there uh, in order to drive the uh, the sort of um, drive the Europeans over the sort of hump for European Defence Union. This has been something that he's been working towards uh, since he 
became pr the president in his first term. Um, so the threat of the US leaving NATO or NATO breaking up is definitely going to be used uh, with to force the Europeans to spend more on defense. Uh, is he going to end war in Ukraine? Of course, he said he is. Uh, but no, in fact, as we've just heard from Vance, what he actually wants is for the Europeans to take over that conflict and make sure that they keep supporting Zelensky in Ukraine there. Is he going to end the war in the Middle East? No, because if you listen carefully to what he says, in fact, he says, uh, we want to see the war ended in the Middle East as soon as possible. In other words, Netanyahu get on with it. And then uh, we see that uh, Netanyahu will be, and, and Israel will be the, uh, the counter to Iran in the Middle East uh, and the US not having to get directly involved in that. That's what uh, their foreign policy seems to be. Uh, and then the question is, will they be starting a war with China? And I think the answer to that is yes, uh, and that has been their plan for quite a long time. Charles, let me welcome you to the program. Uh, any brief thoughts on that? And where do you see this issue with China going? Thanks, Mike. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Vanessa. Good afternoon, all. Yes, I think um, this is exactly where I'm sort of going with this segment and indeed the rhetoric, especially following the BRICS, recent BRICS meeting, that there is inevitably a focus on what the relationship between the United States and China is going to be and indeed what governs that and how we should be thinking about it. And of course, referring to your points of, you know, really, will there be any difference with a Trump as opposed to a Harris presidency? There are a number of things to 